So you've you've hit loggerheads with your husband. You've made a request. It's very reasonable. You've done it multiple times. You've explained what you want. He's not doing it. What do you do? Is there another lever you can pull to make clear this is a really big deal? I'm not going to back down. And so she's like, here's a here's what a boundary would sound like. Hey, the last couple of weeks we talked about you getting home at seven or trying to. You keep getting home at nine. Look. I don't want to end up in that place again where then I get tired and I get resentful and we get in this fight. I just want to be very, very clear. I would love to have dinner with you tonight. I really would. And I know for me, if you're not home by seven, cooking together and having that connected moment, it it just is not going to then happen in a way that feels good to me. So if you get home by seven tonight, I'm so excited that we can have dinner together. And if you come home at nine, I get it. You will probably find me having already had a bowl of cereal and then reading in my bed. And I won't be able to make dinner and we can talk about it again next week. So it's a it's literally laying out what I will do. And then let's say my husband does get home at night. I might still be upset. I mean, I'd be like, this is such a bummer, you know, but I'm not going to feel so resentful. I'm not going to feel so angry because I laid out two situations based on my needs. And either way, I have kind of a path I can walk down that's within my control. I like that a lot. Okay, so I want to talk about this one first. I, almost like I can't really understand what she's even saying because I don't understand her framework at all. I've never thought of the word boundaries when it comes to my children or my marriage. To answer the question of like, what tool do we have in our tool belt about like not getting resentful? I think I really agree with what Kristen said about the meeting. I think that that's, that's a great place to be. I think if you, another tool is like having a mission because as a team, if you are trying to accomplish something, you know, if you're using the sports analogy, you're trying to like get a touchdown or score a point or whatever, then you both understand that that's the goal, that that's the thing you're working towards. And so you, you might have conversations about how to get there or like, which one of you is going to do this or that so that you can get to the end zone. But it's very much like a collaborative conversation and conversation, I think probably is the key about uh, like how to achieve that goal or be on that mission. And then having the, the, the meeting as like a regrouping, like how, how was that? Like the post game meeting or something like, okay, so how was that? How'd that go? Well, I mean, I feel like that's where you could say like, well, you did come two hours late. So that made it a little stressful. I had to kind of keep the kids occupied while I was waiting for you or, you know, whatever the thing is to be able to say those things in that place where maybe your emotions aren't riled up, not in the moment. It's like post game meeting where you can say like, I think that maybe if we tried this or this, it might be better. Can we try that next time? So it's more of like a conversation to me than like a boundary or like a threat that I'm holding over someone's head. Or like, I think one way I really struggle is with manipulation. So I want, I very much in my flesh want to say like, if you don't do this, then I'm going to do this or other way around, you know, like I, I'm just going to, if you make me feel resentful, then I'm going to make you pay for it or something like that. And so. I think in my flesh, I can kind of bend towards that. But I think if we're trying to work together as a team to accomplish something, we both want that thing, then we're going to want to make sure the other person is successful at what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. Yeah. It's difficult to find those, like, what, what are, what do we, what do we, how do we work through resentment? And a lot of this is like you said, April, it's, it's the, it's a framework problem. So basically the kind of modern Western marriage is we are both, we fell in love and we're, we're, we're in this as individuals to get different needs met from a partner. Like that's kind of the framework. And so, and so we, we, if, if you're, I'm sharing very honestly, what, what my needs are, you're sharing very honestly, what your needs are. And it's an ongoing negotiation to try to make sure that nobody is kind of getting, getting way more than the other, like that we're respecting each other as adults and in our attempts to, to like extract from this union what each of us as individuals needs. And that is so fundamentally different than leading a team and saying, we have a goal and collectively we're on the same side of the table trying to achieve something. 
And, and as we do that, because we have the same goal, you know, we, there's going to be the, the question that is going to settle disputes is how does it serve our goal as a team? Like, what are, are, are we, are we trying to like, it's not like just your needs met or my needs met. We're trying to accomplish something together. I, I think this is so different. And part of why I wanted to bring it up is because there is so much conversation around boundaries in, in our culture psychologically. And it's in this framework of you're in these relationships to get individual needs met. And I am trying to understand, number one, is that appropriate language for a family team? And number two, if it's not, you know, how do we deal with the resentment that, that could happen when you are feeling constantly like you're not getting your needs met? There, there's, there's also kind of like a, a missing party. And, and, and when, you're, when you're in a system, let, let's say you, you have a coach who is, is leading a team and is really causing issues in the team and multiple team members are noticing it. Multiple people are frustrated, all these assistant coaches. He doesn't have absolute power. In any kind of coaching scenario, you can always go and talk to the principal of the school, right? You can talk to the president of the university. There are people above the head coach even. And one of the things we do every year during our festival, we have a festival season where we celebrate Sukkot. We, we watch this movie called Ushbazin. And in that movie, it's about a couple and they're, it's, it's a modern day movie, but the couple are ultra Orthodox Jews. And basically through, through the course of the movie, they become completely like their horns just lock over issues and eventually it gets so bad that the wife goes to the rabbi and it's like very serious and she's making her case to the rabbi and the rabbi then goes to the husband and says, Hey, I told your wife to go and spend some time with her parents while we work out. And so it was, it was demonstrating within a community that when you have a lot of authority given to the husband, the husband also has to be under authority somehow. We don't really have that mostly in the Christian world. I think this is really, this is really difficult on families. So that I'm, one of the things I'm teasing out is, is that a necessary part of a structure where this, this could happen? Because we've all heard situations in which like, you know, a, a husband goes off the rails. And so just to say that it, the wife has no recourse ever because they're a team, that seems like it, it, it's going too far as well. But how do you preserve what God has designed for the family in a context where that's happening? 